it is crunch time in it. I know it's almost Easter and I have got to get cooking. I know y'all like, Amy, are you cooking for Easter? Y'all hear our oven is ready. And yes, I'm cooking. It's just, I have been running around like a madman. And so we gotta get started. I wanna start a few things with y'all. I hadn't even decorated my table for Easter, but we're gonna get it all together. So don't think you're behind or you're just like me. You know, if that's, if that's a good thing. If it's not, well, bless your heart, right? Okay, guys, so I wanna share this little recipe with y'all. I get it from who I affectionately call my Aunt Lois. She's actually my Aunt Jeannie, my daddy's little sister's sister-in-law. But when I go to Lois's house, she's always cooking and it's always something so yummy. And she puts so much love into her food and you're gonna see how she, she does, she does. And her husband Buster's the same way. They make you feel like family and you leave there and you are family with them. And so I love to call her Aunt Lois. I grew up when I was a little girl and I had an Aunt Lois. She was my great Aunt Lois, so she's passed away. So I just love it. I love the whole thing and I love Lois. And she's I, she makes so much stuff. I went there a month ago when she was making butterscotch biscotti when we walked in the door. Oh, so anyway, yeah, I've got to get I've got to get over there. Y'all pray I get some time because all I, I need to do is just go film Aunt Lois. She's fabulous cook. Um, she's a blessing at her church. She sure is. Anything she takes is eaten up. No time at all. So I haven't gotten everything out necessarily, but I thought I'd go on and get on here with y'all because y'all are sweethearts. This is called a carrot poke cake, and I like to call it Aunt Lois's carrot poke cake. And you'll see why she does her little things to it that makes it special, and it is very special. Let me grab my scissors. I've just got a 15.25 ounce boxed cake mix, and it is a carrot cake mix. Y'all see this right here? And I'm gonna put that in here. And now, most of the time you'll see, use the directions on the back of the box. Well, sure, but y'all know, oh, this smells so good. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, that just smells so good. What Aunt Lois does, she does put the three eggs and I'm gonna do that y'all know I have lots of eggs and I'm so thankful for that from my girls so I'm gonna put four okay and that just adds a little more volume you do not have to do that and I love to use my box as my garbage it's a good little cheat isn't it yes it is I think lots of us do that these are room temp these came out of the nest this morning to be honest and I never put them in the refrigerator. I knew I was gonna use them really soon today. And all your ingredients need to be room temp. Your cake just bakes up a lot better when everything's room temp. Okay, that's four eggs instead of the three. Aunt Lois, um, also, I'll, I'll tell y'all what she does. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. Y'all know I always add about a teaspoon of vanilla extract to a cake mix just to wake it up. Like, hello, yes, okay. So that's what that's doing. And now, something I want to get my crushed pineapple draining, okay? Because we're gonna use that liquid from that crushed pineapple in the cake instead of the water. And Aunt Lois uses buttermilk too. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let it drain because all we need of the water is three quarter cup. Woo, that was hard to see. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let this drain out of there and then I'll fill it the rest of the way for three quarter cup with the buttermilk. And that adds lots more moisture and flavor and richness. And so y'all see why I love Aunt Lois's recipes because she just soups them up a little bit more, just like how I do. She is my kind of gal. Yes, she is, guys. Let me get my strainer. Right here. Uh, please forgive me. I've run in today. I've been in town running around and um, I went to go see Christy, my hair fairy. I see y'all see she fixed me up real good. She's so sweet. She's a dear friend of mine actually and uh, I just love her so. She always makes me feel good. I know I tell y'all that every time. This is an eight ounce can of crushed pineapple in just the pineapple juice, okay? And you don't have to get it all out of there. And I know you say, well, why don't you just dump it in here? Well, because I want to not put too much moisture so my cake will bake. That's why I'm putting it in there so I can fill it to the three-quarter cup with the buttermilk. So I bet y'all get it. Let me grab my buttermilk. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me get my 
go. Now then, let me put some of these ingredients to the side that I'm not going to be needing. And I need a half a cup because we're also going to add half a cup of coconut. I hope y'all don't mind that I'm just so frazzled this afternoon, but I thought if I don't start that camera, we'll never get this cake in the oven for chunk. It's all right. Okay, guys, that's pretty drained. That's our pineapple going in. Y'all hold on to all that for me. Get it out of the way. All right, so next, now, see that's got about a quarter cup of the pineapple juice there. And now I fill it the rest of the way to the three quarter cup. And let me make sure, if you don't mind, I have got to make sure this says three quarter. Yes, three quarter cup. All right. My eyeballs did see correctly. There we go. Now I won't have too much liquid in my cake. And I love this starts with a box cake, don't you? I do. You could also add some grated carrots if you want to, but I'm not. I'm getting my spatula. Yes, I am. I'm like y'all. I don't like to waste. Okay, I'm going to mix this up, and I'm also going to add a half a cup of coconut. This is sweetened coconut. It's called flakes, but to me it's kind of like shredded, you know. But I don't know. Anyway, y'all know what I'm talking about. One half cup is going in here. This cake is extremely, ah, uh, it's just so good and flavorful. And I keep it in the refrigerator so it's a nice, cool little treat during Easter or any time. You can take this to any kind of family gathering all spring and summer, and it'll get eaten up. Yes, it will. Okay, I'm going to mix this for a couple of minutes and come right back and just do it on about medium-low, okay? Don't over-mix your cakes. There we go. Did I put my oil? I didn't put any oil, did I? Let me stop. Let me stop. Y'all see, that's why I like to get all my stuff out. One third cup vegetable oil. Let's see. I'm closer to the coconut oil, so that's going in. But Aunt Lois puts veggie oil, and any of that will be great. Yes, it will. One third cup. She's all the time. My Aunt Jeannie's so sweet. My Aunt Jeannie's a doll and a half. She um, she made a group text with Lois, Aunt Lois and Jeannie, my Aunt Jeannie and me, just so we can share recipes because she knows that Aunt Lois and I love to cook and do things. We're very similar that way, so Jeannie brought us together. She's a sweetie like that. Um, my Aunt Jeannie's, oh my goodness, she's... She's very sweet. I get a lot of my personality from her, but she's way sweeter than me. <laughs> oh, she is. I tell you, I just love her. Love her. She was here recently, and we went to go visit Lois. She said, Lois wants to see you too. So that was our last stop was going over to Lois. This is my Jenny was saying over there. And um, she said, when we walked in the door, that's all you could smell was butterscotch. And we went in there and Aunt Lois was sitting right in front of the oven. She was making biscotti and she had already cooked the loaf and sliced it in half, or not in half, but in those slices. You know, tell my mind's all over the place. And um, she had them laid out on the sheet and she was watching them very particularly and flipping them over and checking them to make sure they were nice and dried out for biscotti. And what did she do? Yes, she gave me a Ziploc bag full of them and I brought them home to John and I said, baby, I got biscotti and Aunt Lois's. And he said, okay, because he didn't know what it was. Well, I said, in the morning, you dip this into your coffee. And he did, and the next day he was like, I dipped up my coffee and that was good. And then it got down to where we only had two pieces left. And we're like, oh my goodness, what are we gonna do? So I hope I have time one day that I can stop and go over to her home. And any time you go, every time my Aunt Jenny goes, it's always Lois is making this and Lois is making that. And it just, it makes you drool. It really does. She's that kind of person. So you just, you want to go be around her. She'll feed your soul with her food. She really will. My Aunt Jenny was married to Lois's 
uh, brother, Ken, he was my Uncle Ken, and we just lost him not very long ago. And she's still just so sweet. She gets her sister-in-law, my Aunt Jeannie, over there all the time. Like I say, if you go to Lois and Buster's, you're their family. If I took one of y'all in there, you'd become their family that day. I'm telling you, that's how they are. And I just love and adore those kind of people. Don't y'all? Me too. Okay, guys. Can y'all see me? I want to come check because I don't want too much of this stuff to be in y'all's way. Yeah, okay. All right. We're all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. This is something that I've learned through the years when I was younger. I thought if I was having a holiday at my house... Everything had to be washable, breakable dishes, you know, and everything had to be from scratch and homemade, and I would just about wear myself out. And I learned through the years, Anna on Food Network taught me one time that you could have some homemade things, some semi-homemade things, some store-bought things, and in the same sense, uh, you can have some of your pretty dishes out that you would like to display with some food in it. You could have some really nice dishes out to eat on, or you could have some really nice paper plates to eat on, um, and just sort of have like a mixture, you know, to make things a little better on yourself, and you can be around your family more and actually enjoy it. I've literally sat at holidays just ready to go to bed, you know, I mean, and I know some of y'all are going to understand what I'm saying, and you love it, and I love to do it, but I'm just worn out, you know, by the time we get there, it's not that I don't like to do it, it's just I'm worn slap dab out, y'all know, so in that sense, why I said all that is this particular cake I'm going to make in a 9 by 13, it is a poke cake, so it needs to be 9 by 13, but it's disposable, yes, and I got these at the Dollar Tree. Don't they look Easter-y? For one dollar, I did, or maybe a dollar twenty-five, and I'm just going to spray it. Something else that Aunt Lois does in her oven, she says she bakes this poke cake instead of three fifty, like the box will say, at three forty-five. She says she finds it doesn't overcook quite as quickly and dry out, so... 345 degrees Fahrenheit is what I've got in mine on right now. And in this goes. One time, when I was in high school, I shared recipes with some ladies I worked with. And one of them's name was Pam. And she had a carrot cake recipe. It was a box cake mix. And you put a jar of carrot baby food in there. And it was the most moist, good little old cake mix creation, okay? And I don't have that recipe anymore. And so if one of y'all has that, I would love it if you could share it with me. It was so very good. And I had it written down at my mama and daddy's. And I have searched and searched and searched through all of their recipes. And I just cannot find it. And I loved it. I made it made it. Okay. And I don't waste this either. I know I take more time. But we're going to get all that goodness, right? Okay, guys, into this 345-degree oven for about 22 to 25 minutes. You see, this is disposable, so this pan will cook this cake even quicker, so I'm going to keep an eye on it, and I'll see y'all back. All right, y'all will see what I mean when I say Aunt Lois puts a little extra love in here. We're going to sprinkle pecans on top of this cake after we put many other layers and instead of just some pecans, she makes buttered toasted pecans. <laughs> Y'all see what I mean? She puts love into it. She is my gal. She's my kind of gal. Okay, I just put a couple of tablespoons of butter. And into that, we're going to let this melt pretty good. Come on, get melty. Come on, come on, come on. We're going to toast about a cup of pecans in this butter. Let's see. Somewhere around the cup. There we go. Now I'm going to toss these to coat them. I want to put a little bit of salt in there, just like a pinch of sea salt, okay? Nothing major. And we're going to toast them. 
for just about a minute or so. We we'll get them nice and coated in our butter. Y'all, that butter browns a bit. And y'all know that brown butter flavor. And these pecans just smell a little toasted. And that's how you rely on this, just a minute or two. And when you smell those pecans toasty, then you just turn off your fire and let it cool. I'm getting out some other things to go on this cake. We're going to mix Cool Whip with some whipped cream cheese icing. If you can't find whipped cream cheese icing, whip it first with your mixer, okay? So don't stress too much about that. I'm going to mix up some Jello Yum Instant Vanilla Pudding. And y'all know I'll add some vanilla with that, but I'll do that with y'all. And then when this cake, while it's still warm, we're going to poke holes in it. And then we're going to pour some sweet condensed milk all over it. Right? And then these toasted butter pecans and some caramel sauce. <laughs> have I got y'all? Are y'all going to stay with me? Y'all, I have got to chop these for sprinkling on later. And I've got to put them up because if I don't, I'll sit here and do this the whole entire time and we won't have any left. I mean, that is just the truth. Oh, y'all want me to use that little treat we did. Two knives, supposed to be the same knife that I don't have. I don't think. No. Okay, you take your blades. Let me spread out my pecans. And to chop them, get everything out of the way. Here we go. Hold our blades and you chop like that. And you're double chopping. I don't, they don't shoot all across the kitchen, and I know y'all know what I'm talking about. For some reason they don't, which I love. And you're getting twice as much done. And I love that. That's a cute little hack. I saw Martha Stewart do it. I'm sure she learned it somewhere, but we're just spreading the news, right? Yes. It's a fabulous little hack. I'm going to put my chopped pecans up out of Amy's view because I will eat on them the whole time we're waiting on this cake to bake because it's what I do. Do y'all do that too? When I was younger and really was worried about watching my weight, I would chew gum the whole entire time I cooked, guys. <laughs> And that way you can't take a bite of anything, right? Yeah. Now I'm like, nah. We gotta do quality control, don't we? That's exactly right. So now, minutes later, and it is beautiful. It's not over baked. So thank you, Aunt Lois, for the 345 degree temp. And I can tell I didn't even use a toothpick. I just kind of push a little bit. And if it springs back, then it's done too. So I'm gonna let this cool about 10 minutes. It's been cooling for about 10 minutes. And something Aunt Lois said to be sure not to do, don't go all the way through your cake, just almost through your cake. So it will have, it won't be draining out the bottom. Y'all know, y'all know what she's talking about, don't you? We're gonna take a 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. And that's some goodness going on here. You see now why our cake still needs to be a little warm. We'll absorb it all in there. And I'll take a spatula and smooth it out evenly. I will cover my cake and I'm gonna let it totally cool down. Okay, our next layer is a 3.4 ounce box of vanilla instant pudding. And if you only want to put the pudding and you don't want to put the sweet condensed milk, you could. Or if you want to put the sweet condensed milk and you don't want to put the pudding. So it's totally up to you. I'm going to put both. Y'all know. Y'all know what we're going to do. We're going to go over the top. So I'm putting that in there. And then you put two cups of milk. Um, I got the kitchen window open. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but the frogs are just getting it down on the pond. Ridiculous. All right. It's about thick enough. Let me get our cake. I cheated. I put our cake in the freezer. I know I cheat like that all the time. I'll be right back. The next layer going in. And y'all, every time I make any kind of instant pudding, y'all know my little thing I always do. Let's put a little cap full of vanilla extract in there. 
It makes it just taste a little more like homemade, okay? I know I'm gonna use a whole bottle of vanilla extract up on this little simple recipe. <laughs> oh well, it's Easter. It's Easter, it is so gonna be worth it. Ooh, that smells so good, that vanilla in there. And this layer going on, can y'all see the yummy goodness? Can y'all imagine how this is tasting so far? And we are not finished. No, we're not. So not finished. All right, guys. Hmm. Let's see. This is nice and cool, so I'm just going to slide it to the side. Get me a mixing bowl. Now, I've got eight ounces of Cool Whip, and I got the extra creamy. Why not, right? I didn't think for a reason why not either. They were the same price, so I said, yeah, let's get extra creamy. Good gracious, can I get into it without making a mess? I don't know. Okay. Into the bowl. Y'all see all this? Isn't this good? Y'all have to let me know your variations of the carrot poke cake. I love Aunt Lois's variations, don't y'all? All right, this is a 14 ounce container of whipped cream cheese icing. Like I said, if you don't, if you can't find the whipped and you just get the cream cheese icing, I would just use your mixer that we're gonna use here in a second first and whip that icing real well, and then put the Cool Whip in it. And now, some more vanilla flavoring because our vanilla extract, I always put, if I'm using Cool Whip, I put a teaspoon of vanilla extract in there and make it taste a little more homemade. And if I'm using some store-bought icing, I put a teaspoon in there to make it taste a little more homemade. So we at least got to put one teaspoon in here, right? So if you don't want to add all that vanilla, don't, okay? It's going to be delicious without it. I just am. It's Easter, and I'm just doing special, special, okay? All right. Use my cool lid, and I'm just going to mix this up. Mix it up, not down. <laughs> I'm going to mix it. We take our lovely frosting we made, and I kind of try to be careful to put it here and there. So I won't squish the pudding around too much. I know y'all get it. like this. Can y'all hear the frogs on my pond? I hope so. I'll have to take y'all outside after this just so y'all can hear them if you can't. They are loud. There we go and I'll kind of just do this or you can kind of do that or whatever you want to do. Whichever one you want to do. I think I'm going to do my caramel running this way, so I'll do that, guys. I've got some store-bought caramel. I'm using Hershey's. And I'm just going to drizzle it kind of like the way I iced it, kind of. Diagonally crisscrosses, but it doesn't have to be pretty or perfect. You could leave this off and you could just put it on each individual piece. But again, during the holidays, I'm here, there, and everywhere. So I'm going to pre put it as much or as little as you would like. And 
And we didn't eat them because we packed them up. So we've got our buttered pecans. And we will just dot as many as you want to on there. Y'all, we made it to the fun part, right? Yes, it is time to taste this. Oh, where do I start? I'm going to start on the corner. I just like to use a square end spatula when I'm doing this. I'm not pre-cutting it. we got to try this one piece, right? Quality control for Easter. Nobody will mind. No, they won't. Oh, I have to come show y'all. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Let me come give y'all the first bite. Yum. Most important, the taste test, right? No matter how it looks, it better taste good, right? So make sure you get a pecan. It's rendering me speechless. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. First, if you love a carrot cake and the coconut and the pineapple in it, mm, and the spices, so very good. And then, <laughs> the sweetened condensed milk and the pudding kind of play off one another, keep one from being too sweet, and it's cool because it's been in the refrigerator. It is so moist. Oh my goodness. Mm. And the whipped topping and the cream cheese icing with the caramel sauce and the pecans. I mean, really? I know. I know. Aunt Lois, thank you so much for being such a sweet soul in my life. And Aunt Jeannie, thank you so much for being a sweet soul in my life and the sweet soul that put me together with Aunt Lois because I love all her recipes. And you can taste the love in her recipes. And so I want y'all to go make this and have a very happy Easter or a happy holiday or just a happy day to yourself, right? I love all of y'all and I'll see y'all next time.